And so let's so welcome Dr. Tan Yuan. Um, so he's uh, currently assistant professor at Department of Mathematics at US. And before joining, uh, he was at UCLA postdoc with uh, Stanley Osher. So he got his PhD in machine learning from Rice uh, University. Uh, he, uh, you know, co-organized a lot of uh, interesting workshops, including um, deep learning, uh, deep neural models and differential equations in ICLR. And also he's done um, internships with uh, Amazon AI and video research. And he has uh, received uh, many awards, including this uh, Computing uh, Innovation Postdoctoral Fellowship, CI Fellows. Um, so today he's going to uh, talk about mitigating over-smoothing uh, in transformers via regularized non-local functionals. So Tan, you, uh, you may begin. Yeah, thank you so much for the kind introduction, Chen Shao. And it's, uh, it's my pleasure to present my work in the uh, meeting today. Uh, and today I will present our recent work on the mitigating of a smoothing in transformer uh, via regularized non-local functionals. Right. So, and this is a joint work with uh Tam Nguyen, a PhD student at the Rice University, uh, Professor Rich Pinock and myself. <clears throat> All right. So artificial intelligence, right? Uh, AI has caused you know a lot of revolution in a variety of uh, application recently, uh, including uh, computational biology, um, pharma uh, pharmaceutical science, material science, and mechanical engineering. And the models underlying the AI is a deep learning models. And this model contain a multiple layer, right? For example, in this figure, uh, we have an input data, uh, an image, input image, and we send to a deep learning model and the model we process the image uh, from layer to layer and each layer uh, the model try to extract a useful presentation of the image and at the end of the layer the model will obtain a good set of features that can be used for some downstream tasks including classification or linear regression right so in general a deep learning model will contain two parts. The first part is the feature extraction. Uh, for example, in this case, we have a three-layer deep neural network. Uh, the input X will be sent to a linear transformation F1, uh, which parameter theta 1, and then a nonlinear activation is applied on the result. And the output of the first layer will be sent to the second layer. And the same processing happens again at the second layer. Right, And at the end of this feature extraction, we obtain a good set of feature. Uh, and then that feature, in this case, e x of, uh, h of x will be sent to a downstream model for classification or regression. And one particular step the art deep learning models is a transformer, which is uh, the key model underlying the chat TBT, right? And transformer, uh, has been a backbone of also other state of the art AI model, including PERT, GPT-3, Dali-1, Dali-2, image change. And the transformer model, like back to like two years ago, we already anticipated, right? Its power, uh, here is the trend at iClear 2020. Right? People see transformer, like two years ago, they like have a lot of paper at iClear 2020. It has been used in uh, natural language processing, uh, including neural machine translation, question answering, and textual entailment, right? Transformer also be used in speech, audio, and visual processing. And of course, I mentioned before, it been used in AI chatbot, uh, such as in ChatGPT. So like other deep learning model, this transformers model also contain multiple layers of processing. And the input will be processed from layer to layer. The output of the previous layer will be sent as the input of the next layer. Uh, if we look into one layer of transformer, we will see two key components. Uh, the ring component here is just a neural network. So this is similar to a layer of deep neural network. The key difference between a transformer layer and a deep neural network layer is the red box in this figure, uh, which, uh, which capture the, which capture the self-attention, which is called a self-attention. And this red box, what it does, it, it compute, it compute the uh, correlation between the input 
token, the intrinsic token in the input sequence. Uh, in particular, right, if we have if our input is a sentence, uh, a fling and would mean that and and work in the input sentence, right? So each work can be a prospect CA token, right? And the attention, self attention layer, we try to compute the correlation or the similarity between the work in the sentence. So let us uh, look at an example to have a further understanding of what attention does. So here in the example, we have the following sentence. The animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired, right? So uh, each word in this sentence is a token. And what attention does is given a word, is given a token in this sentence, which is it, right? Attention want to compute the similarity between the word it here with all the work, with, with all the work in the sentence. Or in, uh, in other words, it try to capture the influence of all the work in the sentence on the particular work it. And it do it for every single work in the sentence. Right. So let's say your input sequence have dimension of n by d, where n is number of words or token in the sentence, and d is the embedding dimension for each work or each token. Right. After attention, you obtain a similarity matrix of psi n by n, where the uh, the element ij in that n by n matrix will capture the similarity between the token i and the token j in the input sentence. Okay, so mathematically, the cell attention can be computed a follow. Given a input sequence x of dimension n by dx, right? So each token or each work in the input sentence uh, can be represented by x1, x2, xn, right? And what we do is we take in this matrix X and we project it, project this matrix into three different subspaces. We are three linear transformation, WQ, WK, and WV to obtain the new matrices Q, K, and V, where Q stands for the carry matrix, K stands for the key matrix, and V stands for the value matrix. The next step is we compute this QK transpo, right, the matrix product between the carry and the key, and then we normalize the score by a surfmark normalization, right? So the surfmark QK transpo uh, divided by uh, normalization terms of D will give you an n by n matrix that capture the call the, the similarity between element in the input sequence, and we call that attention matrix attention matrix, right? And then we do the attention score to linearly combine the road in the input V, right? In, in, in the matrix V. V here is it another linear transformation of the original input sentence. And in practice, uh, people also introduce residual connection uh, into transformer, into one layer of attention, uh, followed by a uh, Nonlinear mapping, which is in the form of a neural network. So in this figure, this plus side the residual connection is this one, this connection here, right? And the F sub L is a linear, a non, it's a neural network, usually nonlinear, right? That apply row wise on the output of the attention. So even though the formula, the mathematical formula for attention is very simple, right? The submark QK transpose multiplied by V. Uh, but surprisingly, it worked very well in practice, and we currently don't have a lot of understanding of why such such a formula give us a very good results on a wide range of tasks, right? So, in other work, a good understanding of self tension mechanism is currently missing, and like in the case of developing new network, when people develop attention and transformer, it's mostly based on intuition and a lot of engineering work to get the, a working model, right? So a theoretical framework to study attention is currently lacking. And that's, a, that's a, the target of our project, right? Uh, we want to develop a theoretical framework to study attention. Another problem with the self-attention in practice is not a over smooth thing, right? So deep learning layer, one of the power 
of deep learning models when you add more layer into the model it means when the model gets deeper and deeper the performance of the model will increase right uh, when you have a lot of training data but unfortunately for transformer what people observe is when we add more layer into the transformer the performance of the model drops but not increasing right and uh, they do and uh, empirically what we observe is uh, the output from each layer, like at each layer of uh, transformer, right? you look at the output of that, which is a n by d matrix, right? And what happened is the rows in that output matrix become more and more similar to each other when you have more and more layer in the model. And this is not either over smoothing issue in transformer because the, 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 the rows of the output Become so similar, the token, right? The token in the output becomes so similar. It means it, it limit it limit the uh, representation capacity of the model, and therefore the performance drops. Uh, to empirically validate this hypothesis, right? We 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 have the following experiment. Uh, in the left figure here, we consider the task of image classification, and on the x axis, what is the layer index, right? So this is the transformer with twelve layers. And on the y-axis, we can build a cosine similarity between the tokens, between the tokens. And uh, again, let me remind the audience what the token is. Uh, the token can be considered a, you know, roughly a word, a word in a input sentence. So let's say your input sequence of psi n by d, right? So a token, each token is a one by d row in that n by d matrix. Right. And then we can we can build a cosine similarity between the token uh, using the follow the following formula. And we do that at each layer. And what we observe is when uh, the model gets deeper and deeper, mean more layer are added into the model, the cosine similarity of between the token increases. Right. Here we only focus on the, the blue curve. Right. So let me explain why. The blue curve here is a baseline transformer model, which is called the date uh, one particular one popular type of vision transformer, which is the transformer used for the vision task. Right. So this is the baseline transformer without any modification. Uh, the orange curve is our model, is our own model. Uh, of course, we also let our model, you know, it will, will uh, mitigate over smoothing issue. But for now, let's focus on the blue curve only, which is the baseline transformer. When the uh, when the model gets deeper, the cosine similarity between tokens become larger and larger. It means the token become more and more similar to each other. And we also consider another task, which is the image segmentation, and we observe the same phenomenon, which is the cosine similarity increases when the model gets deeper. But then we say, okay, yes, so the token becomes so similar. So, so but you know what what's wrong with that, right? Why, 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 why we don't, why we we shouldn't want that? Uh, so to confirm, you know, the the prop the, the the problem when you have the token become too similar, we also run another experiment. So in this figure, right, the x axis again the index, right, and on the left here you have the cosine similarity, and on the right you have the error rate of the models, the error rate of the model. So we see that when the cosine similarity increases, with the token become more similar, then the error rate also increases, right? So which means over smoothing hurts the performance of the model. Right. And we want to figure out a way to meet to mitigate the effect so that we can construct a very deep transformer model to obtain better and better performance. <laughs> and the weapon that we that we use right, to tackle down these two problems, first it construct first it to construct a mathematical framework for attention in transformer and second to mitigate over smoothing our weapon is using non-local means denoising and what we do is we will show that later in my talk we will show that attention can be derived from the non-local means denoising 
and we can modify that non-local mean denoising in order to mitigate the oversmoothing issue. But before we talk about you know, you know, how transformer connect to non-local mean denoising, let us spend a few slides uh, to, to, to discuss what is non-local mean denoising, right? Uh, so uh, in let's say we have a noisy image, like this image on my slide here, right? One the one of the most popular way that we do denoising, for example, if you want to denoise the image batch here, the image batch B here. Uh, so one popular way is we consider uh, the patch that's similar to the to batch B, right? And take average of the patch in the image. So that we can kind of blur the image a little bit and remove the noise, right? And now the question is how do you define uh, a similarity, right? Traditional way people define the similarity between the image budget by their uh by by their by their look by, by the distance, right? So it means like if a patch, uh, if a patch in the neighborhood of B, then then well, likely that they are similar to B, right? And that is the Gaussian smoothing, right? You consider the local batch, the batch in the uh, local neighborhood of B, and then take average of the batch, right, to denoise this batch B. But then it it uh it might not make sense because, for example, if my batch B, for example, like in this area, right, like you have an edge there, then probably the, the budget here and here will be very different, right? Uh, the budget here and here will be different and take the average of them might not make sense and you will lose the edge information. So instead of that local approach to do the noising, uh, uh, people, you know, in the, uh, in the previous work, right, people propose, let's do the non-local approach. And in the non-local approach, they say, okay, uh, the batch that's similar to the given batch B here might not need to be in the neighborhood of B, right? We can consider the whole image, batch it in the whole image and find the one that is most similar to B and you do batch it to the noise B. So in particular, in this case, we see that the batch Q1 and the batch Q2 here are similar to B, right? So we want to put the weight, the, the influence of Q1 and Q2 on B to be bigger. So the W here will be bigger. And the patch Q3 here, that it, it doesn't look like B at all, right? So so we we reduce we, we make the, the weight between B and Q3 here smaller. And this way Q of B and Q uh W of B and Q1, W of B and Q2, and W of B and Q3 will be used to compute the weighted average of on the uh, patch in the image in the to the denoise the patch P here. And that's not like the non-local mean denoising. It allows us to remove the noise while also reserving you know, some important information like edge. And mathematically, the non-local mean denoising can be written in this following uh, formula, right? Uh, you you have the the H the batch uh uh HA, uh the batch uh 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 sorry the batch XI that you want to denoise right so you consider on other batch in the image and the neighborhood around the batch and you can build a distance right between those neighborhood and use that to denoise your the batch that you uh of your current batch. Uh, and here we do a Gaussian kernel to be distance between the two patches. Right. So in the next part of my talk, what I will do, I will, I will link the non-local mean methods to some attention. Yeah. And then we develop a non-local rational denoising framework for self attention. So before we already talk about, you know, the intuition of non-local means and how we use that to uh, denote images. So let's make it more mathematical gearless, right? So let's consider we have the, a noisy image X, a noisy image F sub X. So this noisy image is the observed, the observed image, right? We see this image. And we want to uh, reconstruct the clean image U sub X, right, from this noisy image. So F sub X will be equal to U sub X plus some noise, right? And we want to remove this noise so that we can reconstruct the clean image use of X. Right, and 
let us let us discuss the setting of the denoising problem, right? So uh, we can consider this the uh, this clean image use of X, right? I is a I I I a function, right? I I a functional. Uh, sorry. So the use of X, I I a function are contained like uh you one X do the X, right? Uh. Here, D is a number of pixels in the image, and X here, uh, 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 D here stands for the, oh, sorry, the, the D here, actually stands for the, uh, uh, the, oh. yes, sorry, so the D here, so it's not fun for the, the, the number of big source. Uh, so the embedding dimension in the uh ooh. yes, yes. So let, 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 let me verify this a little bit. D so the, be the channel, right? Is it D is a number of channels? Uh not necessary. Uh D can be here considered as uh you know, the, the embedding feed, the embedding dimension of the signal, right? So X here is the, the index of the pixel, right? You have like use of X, which you can see the, uh, sorry, you can see the 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 the, the pixel at the location X, and then in that pixel you can capture, you can have a vector representation of that. So in the particular case, like Chen Chao say, right? So it in the specific case, it can be a number of channel, right? In RGB, and D here can be a three dimension, right? Uh, and but it in general it can be you know any embedding dimension. Uh, and uh, let the observed intensity function f sub x, right, to be the observed noisy signal at x, and we can write f sub x equal to u sub x plus the noise. So is it clear here about the setting of u and f? Yeah, I think you can continue. If it's not... Yes, yes. Okay, so let me keep going. And in order to denoise the in order to denoise the image, right? So we can consider the rational denoising. Uh, we can consider the following optimization problem, right? In which we want to minimize the energy function, uh, e, uh, between the clean signal and the noisy signal. And the energy function e it contain two term, right? The smooth term, the trace of u and the fidelity term, the G between U and F, right? The smooth term here, we kind of like do the blurring, right? You you want uh, in the in the clean image, you want uh, you want to enforce the smooth the smoothness, right? Uh, the path should be look like similar, and the conf and the fidelity term G between U and F, uh, will allow us to reserve some important information from the noisy image. As the edge, and we can represent the smooth term J here uh, in the following way. I right? just compute the the distance between uh, uh, between the budget and the image, right? Weighted by the kernel, and the curve fidelity term it computed by the L two norm between the clean image and the noisy image, right? So I mentioned before, minimizing the regularizer trace of U promote the smoothness of U. And minimizing the compact fidelity term G sub U and F will preserve the relevant information in the noisy image F sub X. Right. So what we will show in the next few slides is we show that if we just minimizing this J sub U, the smooth term, what we obtain will be the is really the a self attention in the transformer. Right. And then we expand. Uh, let us do that. Uh, so first we expand the trace of u uh, into the following form, right? And then we take the radian of the j with respect to u because we want to find the clean image u, right? So we want to minimize j with respect to u. So we take the radian of j with respect to u and we obtain the following formula in equation four, right? Uh, dj is over du j. Uh, which is particularly which is like in one embedding dimension in the U, uh, 
like for example in the RGB image like Chen Chao mentioned, right? It can be the UFJ is just like a channel, right? Very in depth channel in that particular case. Uh, and given this formula, right, we can form the ref, the radiant flow, right? Du over dt will be equal to the negative of the derivative of j with respect to u uh, in the following form. Right. So given given the gradient flow, we will solve the gradient flow using the Euler method with the step psi that we choose to be this one. And we can write the solution right, of this ODE uh, in the equation six, right? The, the solution of the ODE is given by equation six, right? Where the big K here is a symmetric kernel. It's the KXY plus the K by X, a symmetric, right? And in this particular case, we choose the u, the initial condition, uh, uy at time zero to be the v sub y, v sub y. And you will see the v sub y later to be the vector value in the tension, the value vector in the tension. And now the, the last step is we will choose uh, this kernel k, this kernel big k, right? So how we choose the kernel big k. So you know, in image denoising, right, we can choose big k to be a Gaussian kernel. Uh, but because we are in the deep learning area, all right, uh, era, right? So we can say, okay, how about we try to learn how we try to learn how to try to learn this this kernel matrix, and we can write this kernel k x y in the form of exponential of k x transpose k y, and then we divide it by some normalizing terms so with d. It is again a bending dimension, right? Here, this k here will correspond to the key vectors in attention and it is learnable so we 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 train the model to learn to learn this kernel and then you can write the whole thing in term of equation seven which turned out to be a symmetric self-attention it's symmetric because uh we don't have a carry yet it's just the ki transpose multiplied by kj where k is a vector is a key vectors in the self-attention and we can obtain like given this symmetric attention, right? We can obtain the attention to what you in practice by breaking the symmetry. Right? We can replace the k sub i by the q sub i with either carry, right? Uh, and both q sub i, uh, both the carry and the and the key, right? The q and the k here are projection of the input. And by replace k uh, k sub i by q sub i, we allow the model, right? to be more flexible, right? It will learn this, the, the carry and the key at the same time. And we summarize our results in this following theorem, right? So we are starting from a uh, rational uh, non-local image denoising, right? We can develop, we can derive this uh, self attention in transformer by minimizing the smooth term, right? In the non-local, uh, Denoising. And to with, talk with the result, we already have a, a sense of why why over smoothing happen, right? Because what attention does, it, it tries to minimize the smooth term, whether promote the smoothness in the output. And it means if we repeat that process in multiple steps, equivalently, you know, multi multiple layer in the transformer, the image will finally become a blur image. And you know, uh, and a popular image, and it will not, you know, it will equivalent to the oversmoothing issue when the token uh, in the output to be the same. So it's an intuition of you know uh, why self attention will uh, result in oversmoothing phenomenon. But let us try to prove it mathematically, right? Uh, so we employ the random walk analysis of oversmoothing to prove its result. Right, so uh, from the reference flow of u, right, we can write this uh, the u t sub i in the following form in the equation eight, right, where a here can be either a symmetric attention or non-symmetric attention, and then we construct a random walk on the vector value of uh of attention, and this random walk b sub b t sub uh, the random walk b sub t here, uh, it a defi e define a follow. Right, B0 i equal to V sub i, and the transition probability will be given by the attention score Aij. And then we prove the following lemma. 
at the uh, we let u and b define as a both, right? Then we have the uti equal to the expectation of the bti, which mean which mean the output of the self attention, the output of the self attention to be the expect, expected value of a random walk, of a random walk defined on the uh, on the node on 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 the token on the token of the uh, of your input sentence, and then we have the following theorem: uh, when we know that the 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 output of the self tension will be the expected value of the random walk, uh, we will show that the random walk b sub t the expectation of b sub t when t go to infinity we also convert to a constant to a constant uh, that show that. The uh, right the output of a self tension also converts to a constant, and that called the oversmoothing. So now we develop a mathematical framework for self tension, and we use that framework to give intuition of why oversmoothing happen, and then we have a, a proof for the oversmoothing in self in transformers, right? Uh, so now let us discuss how we can how we can mitigate this over smoothing for, uh, problem, right? So so what happened is in order to the like the self attention is derived by minimizing the smooth term, the smooth term in the the non local denoising framework. But if we revisit my 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 uh my my previous slide, right? Uh, in image denoise in non-local image denoising, in addition to the smooth term, we also have the fidelity term, and the fidelity term try to preserve the important information in the noisy image, such as the high frequency information in a noisy image, the like edges, for example. So one simple way that we can mitigate the oversmoothing problem in transformer is we try to mini minimize both the smooth term and the fidelity term at the same time, right? So we add back the fidelity term into our energy function. And then using the similar approach, we can develop a new attention, which we call the neutrino attention, right? So this neutrino attention, we correspond to the right flow of minimizing the energy function with both the smooth term and the convex fidelity term. And compared to the baseline attention, this neutrino attention only involve a simple modification, which is we add a residual information, a small uh, a residual information into, uh, back into the attention, right? Where here the V0i is a vector value at the very first layer in the transformer, at the first layer in transformer, and Vi here, are the current value vector at each layer. And with that, we define the neutrino. Uh, the neutrino transformer is a transformer that gives our neutrino attention and it has the ability to overcome the oversmoothing problem. And we have a theory in our paper to prove that when you add back these uh, the, the fidelity term, the convex fidelity term into the energy function and derive the, the dynamic in equation 10 here, then the output the evolution of the use of x, the output of tension under this dynamic does not convert to a constant vector. And that 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 hope that helps showing neutrino mitigate over smoothing issue. Right. And here we saw a figure uh, that try to illustrate our neutrino transformer. So at the very first layer, right, we store the V0, right? The vector, uh, the, the value vector at the first layer of a transformer, right? And then in each subsequent layer, we take the value vector V1, for example, the first layer, you take V1 and you subtract V0 from Z1 and you uh, scale it by the scale factor alpha and add it back to the output of the tension. And we do so at each layer. So a very simple modification. Uh, will not increase memory, will not slow down the processing, but it obtained better performance by mitigating the oversmoothing issue in transformer. And to confirm, to, to confirm the advantage of our proposed neutrino transformer, we run experimental, we run uh, a variety of experiments, right, to justify uh, 
the benefit of our methods. Uh, so here in the slide, uh, in our work, we can see the image net classification, uh, image segmentation, and also a language modeling task on Wikitext 102E. Uh, in particular, let's look at the image net classification, right? So let's look at these three lines, right? The submark date is a baseline, baseline vision transformer without any modification. And then the neutrino date E, we replace the submark attention in in that transformer by a neutrino attention. And then we train the whole thing end to end, right? And we see that when we do that, we obtain a better performance than the baseline. Uh, the improvement here is almost 1%, which is significant for image name. Uh, and then in the last one, the neutrino adaptation, what we do is we take the submark date, we train it. So we have a pre-trained submark date, and then we take that pre-trained model, we replay the submark attention by the neutrino, and then we fine tune for a couple uh, iteration. And we also observe that when we do so, uh, our neutrino, when we train from a pre-trained baseline model also obtain a better accuracy than the baseline. Uh, in this true two light, right, we try to show if we combine our neutrino with a slightly arc method to, to mitigate over smoothing with a fit scale, then we also improve the steady arc methods. Uh, and a similar, similar result for image segmentation and language modeling. Right. So another experiment that we do. Uh, we we want to confirm that in transformer right from layer to layer right it will try to minimize the smooth term the smooth term trace of you right because in our theoretical result we saw that when when we try to minimize the trace of you we obtain the formula for the attention and now we empirically very validate that right so here on the x axis it uh, uh, index and on the y axis it just trace of you right so both during the trend and test we see when we add more layer in the transformer, the trace of you, the smooth term, will be decreased, will be decreased. So it's so that by, by the important result, we justify that, we, we justify that transformer, actually the baseline transformer, actually try to minimize the trace of you over layer. And finally, we want to show that our methods, neutrino, will help mitigate over smooth thing. Right, so we discussed the blue curve already at the, at the beginning of my talk. Right, when we say when we add more layer into the model, the cosine similarity between the token will be increased. Right, uh, this is for the baseline date, the vision transformer. For our methods, the neutrino date was in the orange curve here. Right, we see like one number of layer. Uh, when when we have more layer, right, the cosine symmetry is still small. Even though at the end it does slightly increase, but it's you know it it's still much smaller compared to the baseline. Uh, and this holds for both the trend model and the randomly initialized model. And the results show that our neutrino reduced of a splitting in image, uh, in both image processing and natural language processing task. So in conclusion, in this work. We develop a non-local rational denoising framework for cell attention, right? And then we set line on over smoothing issue that limit the representation capacity of transformers. And then using our framework, we develop a new channel, right? A new class of transformer that can that are able to alleviate over smoothing issue. And then we provide theoretical proof for our results. And with that, I will end my talk and open the floor for questions for the audience.